In this video today guys, I'm going to showcase the best competitive settings in Fortnite Chapter 3 that will boost your FPS, lower your input delay and also give you a ton of secret advantages that will literally turn you into a pro. Guys, if this video helps you out, then feel free to drop a like on it and subscribe for more videos like this. Now let's go ahead and get into the settings first. For Windows mode, this needs to be set on full screen as it will give you the lowest amount of input delay and prevent any screen tearing on your monitor. Resolution, this can be on the default 1920 by 1080 or stretched resolution if you like. If you choose to use the default resolution, you'll have the most FOV or field of view and the highest quality possible in game. That will come at the cost of some FPS depending on what tier your PC is. If you choose to use a stretched resolution like 1656 by 1080 or 1400 by 1050, you'll get much less FOV when compared to native. As you can see, you get a lot less right here. But you'll also get two massive advantages. That's bigger player models that make enemies easier to hit, which improves your aim. And you'll also benefit from getting much much more FPS in game as there will be less pixels to render on screen. Frame rate limit, I personally do not use unlimited FPS anymore guys as I've heard it can be very unstable during end games so instead I choose to cap my FPS at 165 on my 144Hz gaming monitor. If you guys also have a 144Hz gaming monitor, a 240Hz or 360Hz you can either choose to match your FPS so the FPS to the monitor refresh rate or you can do what I do where you cap it slightly above. Oh as well guys if you are using a G sync monitor which are very popular at the minute i recommend capping your fps at these exact amounts depending on what your monitor hertz is because this can reduce screen tearing and improve your latency for g-sync monitors on 144 hertz i would go 141 fps for 240 hertz i would go 237 fps and for 360 hertz i would go 357 fps brightness i would personally recommend using a higher brightness than the default brightness so something like 125 percent in my opinion guys this season a higher brightness looks way better it allows you to spot enemies easier as well even in dark to day cycles and it just looks again overall a lot better user interface contrast this doesn't really matter all it does is change the way your settings look on screen as you can see right here guys colorblind mode this is very debatable right now in chapter 3 some people hate it and just simply refuse to turn it on but others like myself really enjoy using specific colorblind modes like tritonope on the strength number 10 in my opinion guys tritonope really does brighten up the game and make it look a lot better and it also also allows me to see the storm a lot easier but you yourself you may disagree and you may like certain colorblind modes like deuteranope or even protonope just try them out for yourselves in game guys and let me know your thoughts 3d resolution some players choose to turn this down slightly to around 90 to even 80 percent to give them some extra frames in game as as you guys know you're literally reducing the pixels on your screen which does obviously in turn increase your fps but if you choose to lower the 3d resolution in game make sure to not go too low on the percentage because you're game will become incredibly pixelated slash blurry like this on screen. I myself recommend either using 100% for the majority of you guys, but if you do want some extra FPS, feel free to turn it down to around 90%, but I wouldn't go any lower than that. I think Bugger even uses like 90% sometimes just for that extra frame boost. View distance, I personally use medium as I find it a really good balance between being able to see far while also being able to gain some FPS, but for you guys, you can really use any one of these. Just know that the further you make the view distance the less fps you will get in game but again you will be able to see much further so it's just up to you really textures i recommend turning textures to medium if you haven't already as this will give you a slight fps boost in game when compared to low because if you didn't know already guys this basically makes your gpu work harder than your cpu which increases frame rates if you don't believe me feel free to try it out for yourselves and for rendering mode i personally would recommend using the performance mode if you want the most fps possible for the mesh options you you can go either low meshes they look like this on screen and are said to give you more fps and the high meshes option look like this and these also are said to give you more fps for more information on this be sure to check out this video on screen i'll leave a link in the description below and also guys if you don't want extra fps and you do have a high-end pc you may find that using either directx 11 which is the most stable version of directx or directx 12 to work better i know for directx 12 this has been fine-tuned with rtx cards so things like like Nvidia Reflex low latency on the plus boost setting as well as DLS work really really well on this. As you can see for this specific setting it's been fine tuned to the RTX cards. Next up we've got game settings. For these I would put auto open door to be on as this allows you to easily walk through doors if you accidentally edit them into a door while free building. If you don't have them on auto open doors you could see yourself just literally walking point blank into a door and it can be really frustrating. Disable pre-edits. This honestly can be on or off. Off gives you more control and 
you can bait enemies like Mortos does right here. But if you do turn it on, this will obviously disable you from doing this. And some people actually prefer this as it sometimes can get in the way when you are free building. Confirm edit on release. If you don't know already, guys, this automatically confirms an edit action when you release it and make that edit. It's very debatable right now, like the setting in itself. Many pros like Mongrel choose to have it turned off as it can definitely give you more control when you're actually doing peace control in game. But on the other hand, I know a few pros out there still choose to have it turned on. So it really comes down to personal preference, but I think the majority of pros out there do have it turned off just because how much control you get when doing peace control. Hood options, I personally recommend using 80% as it's not too big and it's not too small. And I also choose to use the reticle ammo indicator turned on because it's really nice to see a visual counter of the amount of rounds left that remain in your weapon. For sensitivity, I personally would recommend using something between 6.5% to 8% on 800 mouse DPI. The reason for why I choose this guys is because it's overall a medium sensitivity which gives you a balance of aim and mechanics. It's not too low, it's not too high, it's literally smack bang in the middle. And also for those wondering why I choose to use 800 DPI, well to be honest I choose either 800 DPI to 1600 DPI as high DPIs really can benefit you like much more than they can on 400 DPI. To find out why and the reasons behind this feel free to check out my other video on screen right here. Sound options, the majority of these are mostly optional except sound quality. This honestly should be turned off as it can decrease your FPS if it is on high. Make sure it's set to low. Visual audio is another setting to consider. Pros like Booger use this a lot these days because it can give you a big advantage. And I talked all about the advantages in this video on screen. I'll leave a link in the description below. Oh, as well, some pros still use the Windows Sound Boost option, which I did make a video about. So if you want to set this up for yourselves, guys, feel free to check out this video on screen. And then finally, guys, we've got Keybinds. Now, this in itself requires another separate video, but one thing I highly recommend using is double movement. If you don't know, you can get double movement in Fortnite and it basically turns your movement from looking like this to looking like this instead and it just gives you way more control and feels so much smoother. Right now there are two free programs that all the pros are using that are 100% allowed to be used in Fortnite. The first one is Wooten. This is the more simple to use program and literally requires like one click to set up, which I did a video all about on screen right here. And then the other one is Keys to X Input. This is a much more complex program but it gives you so many options and that's why more pros are sort of using this one right now which I also did a video about on screen right here link will be below and that right there guys is all of the best competitive settings in Fortnite chapter 3 if this video did help you out or if you did learn something new then feel free to let me know guys by dropping a like on the video subscribing to the channel I know a ton of you out there aren't subscribed I have no idea why it's free be sure to do it and then finally if you want to support me directly you can use code life in the Fortnite item shop there's a ton of epic skins in there right now if you pick up one of these feel free to use code life in there guys it'll help me out a ton i'll catch you all in the next video thanks for watching peace